Hesla that is used for the indirect measurement of enthalpy. Video lecture will include Hess law of constant heat summation, its example and explanation. And first law of thermodynamics, a special case of Hess law. And numer some numerical problems. Hess law of constant heat summation, their examples and explanation. And the first law of thermodynamics, these are discussed in part 1 of the video. And numerical problems will be discussed in part 2nd of the video. Why this law is developed? In certain chemical reaction, enthalpy of formation cannot be determined directly due to the following reason. Some compounds cannot be directly synthesized from their elements. Rate of some reactions are very slow to be subjected for enthalpy measurement. In some cases, side reaction takes place and produce product other than desired one. So these are the three reasons. Because of these reason, we will use Hess law of constant heat summation that is used for the indirect measurement of heat or enthalpy. Hess law. This law was put forwarded by G. H. Hess in 1840. It states that the amount of heat evolved or absorbed in a chemical reaction is the same whether the reaction takes place in single or several step. So we are changing a system A to B. And the amount of heat evolved in a single step or we can convert the A to B through various step. The amount of heat in single step and in multiple step, some of the multiple step should be same. Net heat of reaction depends only on the initial and final step and not on the intermediate step through which a system may pass. Hence, law often called law of constant heat summation. It is direct application of law of conservation of energy or first law of thermodynamics. Explanation of Hess law. We will take a system that is A and it will change to B. Now this change will be brought about through single step and multiple step. A that is the initial state of a system. It is changes directly to B that is the final state. And the amount of heat that is absorbed is equal to delta H. In case of multiple step, A changes to B indirectly. Indirectly, it means that it is passing through some intermediate steps. And there are three steps. In first step, A changes to X. Then X changes to Y. And the Y is finally converted to B. Now, these are the intermediate steps or intermediate uh, products and it is the uh, reactant step or initial state and that, that will be the final stage. The heat evolved during this process that is the conversion of A to X it is delta H1, X to Y is delta H2 and Y to B it is delta H3. According to Hessler, the, cause, the total absorption of heat is the sum of the heat evolved in different step. So here it is a single step and A is converted to B through various steps. If we sum up these step, this will be equal to the heat evolved or heat absorbed in a single step. So delta H that is through single step, it is equal to the sum of the heat evolved in multiple step. That is delta H1 plus delta H2 and delta H3. The multiple step, sum of the multiple step heat evolved, it should be same the heat evolved in single step. Example is the formation of sodium carbonate from sodium hydroxide and carbon dioxide. The formation of sodium carbonate will be brought about single step and multiple step or two step process. In single step process, sodium hydroxide it is directly converted to sodium carbonate by combining it with carbon dioxide and the amount of heat that is evolved that is equal to minus 89.08 kilojoule per mole. In two step process, sodium hydroxide it is combined with carbon dioxide and it will produce sodium bicarbonate and the amount of heat that is evolved in this step is minus 48.06 kilojoule per mole. Now this sodium bicarbonate 
further combine with sodium hydroxide and it will produce sodium carbonate and the amount of heat evolved is minus 41.02 kilojoule per mole. Now according to Hessler, delta H that is a single step, it is equal to the sum heat evolved in, a, in, uh, in multiple step. So delta H1 plus delta H2. Here it is equal to delta H that is the direct conversion of sodium hydroxide to sodium carbonate and this is the stepwise process. Now delta H1 is equal to minus 48.06 plus and delta H2 is equal to minus 41.02 so minus plus will multiply it will produce minus. Now we add this delta H is equal to minus 89.08 kilojoule per mole that is obtained from the multiple step and that is equal to the heat change in single step. So this is the proof of Hessler that the, uh, the amount of heat evolved or absorbed in single step it is equal to the amount of heat evolved or absorbed in multiple steps. First law of thermodynamics that is a special case of Hess law. Hess law is based on the first law of thermodynamics which says that the energy cannot be created or destroyed but can be converted from one form to another form. Hess law of constant heat summation states that the enthalpy change of a reaction is the same whether it occur through one step or through many steps. So here the energy content of a system will remain the same and in Hess law the enthalpy will remain the same. The first law of thermodynamics states that the total energy of a substance before and after any physical or chemical change should be equal. So the energy that is present with reactant it will be equal to the energy that is present with product. According to the law, the total energy of a reactant should be equal to the total energy of the product. It will not change with the path followed by the reactants to form products. That is the state function or it will not depend upon the uh, path variables. Hence, in heat energy can also be considered as reactant or product of a reaction and will be included in reaction. So we will consider a exothermic reaction A plus B it will produce C plus D plus delta H heat will be evolved. If we sum up the energy content of A plus B it will be equal to sum of the energy content of C plus D plus delta H. So here delta H will be considered as product and the this energy will be included in the sum of C plus D. Now the energy that is present to the uh, product side it is equal to the energy that is present to the reactant side. In endothermic reaction A plus B plus delta H because the reaction is endothermic so the heat energy will be gained by the reactant and it will produce C plus D. Now this delta H energy it will be stored in C plus D. It means that it is converted to C plus D. A plus B plus delta H it is converted to C plus D. It cannot be destroyed but it is stored in C plus D. In this case if we reverse this reaction C plus D plus delta H it will produce A plus B. So A plus B and the energy that is supplied to the C plus D it will be stored in A plus B. So the energy content that is towards the reactant side it is equal to the energy content that is towards the product side. This allows reactants containing uh, reactions containing reactants and products to be treated as algebraic equation and carrying out mathematical operation on them. So we will sum up the energy that is mathematical operation sum we will sum up the energy of A plus B and it will be equal to the sum of energy C plus D plus delta H. The same is the case with endothermic reactions. It should be remembered that an exothermic reaction in one direction will be endothermic in the reverse direction. 
so if we consider it a plus b these are reactant and it will produce c plus d plus delta h so this reaction is exothermic if we combine c plus d so we will provide the heat energy that is equal to delta h then it will be stored in a plus b so the energy content should remain the same whether the reaction is taking place in one step or multiple step or in what way the change is brought about the energy content will remain the same heat of formation of carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is prepared by reacting carbon with oxygen but along with carbon monoxide carbon dioxide is also formed so to determine the heat of reaction of carbon monoxide formation an indirect method will be used so carbon wet in combined with half mole of oxygen it will produce carbon monoxide and this is the desired uh, quantity of the heat that will be calculated there are two steps reaction given that is carbon when it combine with oxygen it will produce carbon dioxide and the amount of heat evolved is minus 393.5 kilojoule per mole carbon monoxide it will combine with half mole of carbon half mole of oxygen it will produce carbon dioxide and the amount of heat evolved is minus 285.7 kilojoule per mole now we will solve it if we look at the reaction c plus half o2 that is the formation of carbon monoxide and we will find the enthalpy change for this reaction so carbon monoxide is toward product side and if we look at the reaction 2 here the carbon monoxide is towards uh, reactant side so we will invert this reaction which mean that carbon monoxide and oxygen will be shifted to this side product side and carbon dioxide will be shifted to reactant side by inverting this reaction the heat uh, the sign of the heat energy will be reverse so inverting the reaction 2 and adding both the equation according to the hess law we will obtain the heat energy of carbon monoxide so carbon when combined with oxygen it will produce carbon dioxide that is the reaction 1 reaction 2 we have invert it 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 so carbon monoxide it is converted to carbon mon carbon dioxide it is converted to carbon monoxide and half mole of oxygen simply revert reverting this equation so we will invert the sign so here it is minus and it is converted to plus now adding both the equation if there are some same term that should be cancel out so carbon dioxide will be cancel out with carbon dioxide and here the half mole of oxygen it will be cancel out with half mole of oxygen in reaction 1 half mole will be left so the reaction obtain is carbon plus half mole of because here is left half mole is left so half mole of oxygen it will produce carbon monoxide that is only the left product towards the product side so we will sum up these values both delta h1 plus delta h2 delta h1 is minus 393.5 delta h2 is plus 285.7 because we have changed the sign from minus to plus with inverting the reaction so minus plus will produce minus so we will minus these both term minus 107.8 so 107. Point, minus 107.8 kilojoule per mole that is the heat that is used in the formation of carbon monoxide